Let's dance. I'm Maxwell Garcia. This is MWG Sports. And we are now in the month of May for this quarantine. We are getting some news around multiple leagues that plans are starting to come together. The NBA is kind of negotiating with Walt Disney World or the worldwide place of sports in Orlando to kind of get the NBA season back up and running. Right now, there's some complications because some players are worried about injury when you're just rushing to come back. So they want like a couple weeks of like a training camp again. I wouldn't be surprised if they implemented maybe just like one or two preseason games and then just like a couple regular season games and then just a huge field for the postseason tournament. So you're not going to just see eight seeds on both sides. I think they're going to probably open it up to maybe like 12 seeds and then maybe like it's a play-in. So like eight faces 12, nine faces 11. However, you have to get it to work. I think they're going to allow more teams in. I mean, I would love to see New Orleans Pelicans versus the Memphis Grizzlies. Ja versus Zion. That would be a great matchup because you got to give those teams that are on the brink of making the playoffs just outside of the 8 seed, the 9, the 10, the 11, which is where the Pelicans are, which is where the Blazers are, I'm pretty sure. you got to allow those teams into the playoffs you got to give them a chance because the regular season was cut short and we were just ramping up to this late playoff push so the players are worried about just coming back on time right now the nba doesn't have a set schedule in place on how many regular season games are going to have what type of playoff bracket you're going to have it's all up in there right now but i think they're going to have a meeting next friday which should clear more things up we'll see i mean the nhl just announced that they're going to have a 24 team playoffs which i'm not even sure what's regular for them but 24 teams is a lot we have no news on when nfl training camps are going to start and if there's actually going to be fans in the stadium but that's going to be revealed months later and talking about the nfl I think we have to talk about the Ryan Fitzpatrick interview, the virtual one via probably Zoom with the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins interviewed two players, Ryan Fitzpatrick and Devon Godshaw. Devon Godshaw is a defensive lineman and probably most of the focus is on the quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick. And here's, here's my question. Why didn't Josh Rosen do an interview? Sure, maybe the Miami Dolphins just asked those two players to do an interview, but Vince Beagle just went on a smaller Miami Dolphins uh, YouTube channel called uh, Dougley Do Wrong, and Vince Beagle got a virtual interview. And since it's virtual, you just got to log on on Zoom and just have a conversation. And I think that's very important for Josh Rosen right now since people are calling him a bust, and he really is. I mean, he's failed in two locations in the three games he started for the Miami Dolphins, the Dolphins just didn't look invigorated. They just look weak. They didn't look like they had any leadership. And my question is, with Tua coming along, with Ryan Fitzpatrick, and then with Josh Rosen just hanging in there, I don't see Josh Rosen stepping up with his leadership. It just looks like he's just falling behind to Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick's truly taking command of the locker room and ooh, we got to talk about that josh rosen trade rumor is it possible that josh rosen can be traded for a second time and if history does repeat itself which it tends to do josh rosen most likely will be traded i as a dolphins fan i don't think josh rosen should be traded because he should be a quality backup like ryan fitzpatrick is what 36 37 he's not going to be around forever so I think once Ryan Fitzpatrick retires, you could just have Josh Rosen to back up Tua in case he gets injured. And uh, yeah, Tua does have an injury history, so I could see that happening. The Miami Dolphins quarterback room has to be the most controversial quarterback room right now because we don't know who's going to start. We have this guy who is a 2018 first-round pick who just doesn't look like 
he's ever going to be given a chance to become a starter. I mean, you do have quarterback rooms, maybe like Nick Foles and Mitch Trubisky, which are also interesting, but we have a three-quarterback battle. And in my opinion, whoever plays the best in training camp should start. Looks like Tua's healthy. I mean, did you see that workout video with Tua doing like the ladder with his quick feet? Tua Tungavailoa is looking good. And Josh Rosen just... I th- I think the Dolphins will... I think they should keep him as a quarterback too. But if you do get a third round or a fourth round selection for Josh Rosen, I could easily see the Dolphins pulling the trigger on him. Because I feel like the Dolphins really do love Ryan Fitzpatrick as the veteran presence. Maybe as a starter over Tua just for his rookie year. And then as a good backup in case Tua gets injured and just to mentor him. So Tua Tunglai Valoa, his injury history, that chip on his shoulder, the fifth overall pick, tank for Tua came true. And his brother, Taula Tunglai Valoa, I think I said his name right. Very unique names since they're from the Hawaiian culture. Taula Tunglai Valoa transferred to Maryland, he's a sophomore, played in five games, well, appeared in five games, wasn't really a starter last year, since you know Mac Jones and uh, his brother was starting most of the games. But I'll definitely keep an eye on Maryland football because Tua is like six feet, Taula is like 5'11". They should be pretty much the same quarterback since you know they have the same genes, but if Taula lives up to Tua's name, which is a huge tax to do, I'll for sure be watching some Maryland football for the first time. I mean, I've never been interested in Maryland Terrapins football, but yeah, I'll watch it. And we have to talk about the KBO. The KBO, or the Korean Baseball Organization, was pretty much the first live sporting league to come back within this pandemic. It started about, I would say, three weeks ago. And ESPN is broadcasting six games a week. And yes, those broadcasted games are at 5 a.m., 4 a.m., 1 a.m., which makes it difficult for a lot of people to watch, especially me. I tried, like I actually attempted waking up at 5 o'clock every morning. Well, not every morning, but just for like four straight mornings to watch some Korean baseball. And it just didn't feel like... I don't know, it it was too much of a struggle waking up at 5 in the morning. And now, like, since your body's approaching just a summer vacation, you want to sleep in later, way more than just 5 a.m., like, to 10 a.m., 11, 1, 2. So, of course, you could record the Korean baseball games. Um, How's the level of play? So, the Korean baseball organization... It's definitely not the MLB. The pitching is just not the same. Like with pitchers only pitching like a 90 mile per hour fastball. I'm not the biggest fan of baseball because of just how slow the pace of the game is. But it is live sports and it is the only live sports that are happening right now. So I'm going to go over all the standings for the KBO and I'll talk about what has stuck out to me so the first team in the kbl right now and that is the nc dinos they're 13 to 3 then we have the dusan bears they're 10 to 6 then we have the lg twins they're also 10 to 6 they have this guy named uh, ramos and if you didn't know the kbo allows three foreign players per team and then we have the Kia Tigers, 10 and 7. And Kia Tigers have probably my favorite player in the whole league right now, and that's Preston Tucker. Preston Tucker has a brother who also played in the MLB. And one of the games I saw of the Kia Tigers, he went 4 for 4 with a home run, got a bunch of RBIs that game. Preston Tucker looks like he could be up there in the MVP talks. He's definitely one of the reasons why the Kia Tigers have 10 wins and are a top four team in the KBO. Then we have the Kiwoom Heroes. They're also 10-7. Then we have the Lotte Giants, 8-8, eight eight, kind of falling off a cliff in the past week 
with more and more losses racking up. Then we have the KT Wiz, they're 7-9. The Hanwha Eagles, they're 7-9. Then we have the Samsung Lions, they're 5-12. And, and uh, yeah, it's important to note that if you couldn't tell, you definitely got some heavy sponsorships from some companies. LG, Kia with the cars, Samsung, not just the cities. Interesting. And then the last team, which definitely has the most interesting mascot name, the SK Wyverns, which stands for uh, Two Winged Dragon, I'm pretty sure. And they're 2-4. and four. So they're definitely the worst team in the league. And right now... The KBO postseason is supposed to take place halfway through October, but that could be delayed because if anyone has the coronavirus, they shut down the league for three weeks, which is interesting. And this playoff format is super weird and different. I don't know if you know what the West Coast Conference College Basketball Division One conference tournament looks like, but it's this tournament where the first seed gets all the way to the semifinals and then the second the second seeds right before that then third seeds right before that and the fourth and fifth seed play first so in the first round the five plays the four and guess what the four starts with a 1-0 series lead i think it's a best out of three and supposedly the number one seed usually wins the whole tournament since they have such an advantage in placement. Um, I really just don't like how there's so many regular season games. I really think that the MLB, the NBA should look into condensing some of the games because it just devalues the importance of the individual regular season games. Like, of course, I watch in the postseason, but just the regular season, eh. And the we have to talk about the XFL might come back? Question mark? I thought that the XFL was going to be dead forever. I mean, I thought it was just absurd how the AAF played for eight weeks while the XFL only played for five weeks. If you would have told me that fact, I would not have believed you because, well, the coronavirus shut down the XFL down pretty much. Oliver Luck, Andrew Luck's dad, is very upset with the lawsuit and everything. And the XFL even filed for bankruptcy. But there's a rumor going around that Vince McMahon might buy back his very own company from bankruptcy, which I'm not sure how this works because I thought Vince McMahon owned all of the XFL. So I don't know why he's buying it back. And maybe he's going to revive it for the 2021 season. I'd love to see the XFL come back. I mean, it's giving players a second chance. And, it, of course, it's football in the spring. I mean, who doesn't want football in the spring? It's great. And that's it for my first episode of MWG Sports. Hopefully you enjoyed. This is my first podcast. Probably the setup isn't too good. Camera work, not the best. Lighting, not the best. Audio, not the best. But you stuck stuck with me. Talked about some Ryan Fitzpatrick stuff, some Miami Dolphins stuff. And we're just waiting for sports to fully come back. I mean, Tom Brady, Payne Manning, Phil Milkerson, and Tiger Woods are all playing in this charity golf tournament today. And we got the KBO. And we got some soccer in Europe. That's not even broadcast on ESPN or any television television networks that I could reach. So right now we're just in the waiting game. We could all just enjoy time away from sports, catching up on some shows, listening to some music, binge watching some TikToks for hours and hours. And that's it. Thank you for watching. That's my show. Make sure you bless some peace out.